in the 1954 film On the Waterfront, directed by Ilya Kazan and penned by Bud Schulberg, Marlon Brando portrays Terry Malloy, a former boxer turned longshoreman. The narrative centers on the Waterfront Crime Commission's probe into corrupt union activities. Terry becomes embroiled in the web of deceit following the orchestrated murder of Joey Doyle by the union leader Johnny Friendly. As the story progresses, Terry is swayed by Eddie, Joey's sister, and the moral guidance of Father Barry, leading him to a path of self-reflection and the pursuit of redemption. This scene subtly foreshadows a grave calamity that looms in the years ahead. In the 1954 film On the Waterfront, Marlon Brando portrayed the lead character Terry Malloy with a performance that remains a significant point in cinematic history. During the production, Brando's working hours were limited to a schedule that concluded at 4 p.m. each day. This arrangement was part of his contract and was specifically designed to accommodate his personal needs. Following the recent passing of his mother, Brando was undergoing therapy to work through issues related to his parents. The time allocated for these sessions was essential for him, and the production schedule was adjusted to ensure he could attend his appointments. This period in Brando's life was challenging, and the support he received to balance his professional and personal obligations was a testament to his standing and the respect he commanded as an actor. Despite these personal trials, his portrayal off Milloy is often cited as one of his finest performances, showcasing his ability to channel deep emotions and complexities into his roles. You're keeping me away from all of this. But Pop, I've seen things that I know were so wrong. Now how can I go back to school? In the production of the 1954 film On the Waterfront, the filming of the taxi scene presented significant challenges that influenced the performance's emotional intensity. The scene required intense interaction between the characters played by Marlon Brando and Rod Steiger. However, due to scheduling conflicts, Brando was not available when it was time to film Steiger's close-up shots. This meant Steiger had to perform without Brando present, reacting instead to an off-camera assistant reading Brando's lines. The absence of Brando during these crucial moments led to Steiger feeling a lack of support as he had provided his presence for Brando's close-ups. This situation created a sense of professional resentment from Steiger towards Brando. Despite these difficulties, the scene remains one of the most powerful in the film, showcasing the actor's abilities to convey deep emotions under less than ideal circumstances. The resulting performance contributed to the film's critical acclaim and its status as a classic in American cinema. What? The bottom of the church. You know what you're letting yourself in for? In the 1954 film On the Waterfront, the technical team faced a significant challenge during the production of the taxi scene. Without access to advanced rear projection equipment, which was commonly used at the time to create the illusion of movement in scenes featuring vehicles, the crew had to devise an alternative solution. They employed a stripped-down taxi cab shell and implemented a combination of practical effects to achieve a convincing sense of motion. This included the use of Venetian blinds, which were manipulated to mimic passing street lights and shadows, as well as flickering lights that provided the impression of the taxi navigating through the urban environment at night. These innovative methods allowed the filmmakers to create a realistic and dynamic scene that contributed to the film's overall authenticity and atmosphere. The resourcefulness displayed by the crew in this instance is a testament to their ability to solve complex production problems with limited resources. Man, three bucks ahead, that's uh, 26.73. Charlie, you got In the 1954 film On the Waterfront, Marlon Brando's portrayal of Tara Malloy is a highlight, particularly in the taxi scene where his spontaneous improvisation brought a raw authenticity to the character. However, this approach caused a shift in the director's method. Alia Kazan, valuing the integrity of the script, instructed Brando to maintain fidelity to the written dialogue. This incident underscores the delicate balance between an actor's creative expression and the director's structured vision. The scene became a defining moment in the film, showcasing the powerful dynamic between actor and director and how both elements are crucial in bringing a story to life on screen. The tension that arose from this clash of creativity versus control contributed to the film's dramatic impact, illustrating the challenges and negotiations inherent in the filmmaking process. It's tough, father. Like it ain't part of America. You know how a trigger logo works, father? No, how?
In the production of the 1954 film On the Waterfront, director Elia Kazan implemented a unique approach to cast the lead role. To entice Marlon Brando, a highly sought-after actor of that era, Kazan orchestrated a demonstration of a scene under the direction of Carl Malden featuring Paul Newman. This strategic move was designed to spark Brando's interest in the project. By showcasing Newman's interpretation of the scene, Kazan aimed to ignite a competitive spirit in Brando, prompting him to commit to the film. This tactic exemplifies the calculated efforts directors sometimes employ to secure the right talent for their films, ensuring that the cast aligns with their artistic vision and the demands of the narrative. The success of this strategy was evident in Brando's captivating performance, which became a significant factor in the film's critical and commercial success. Marlon Brando's portrayal in On the Waterfront is often hailed as one of the greatest performances in film history. However, Brando himself did not share this sentiment. After watching the film, he felt a profound sense of dissatisfaction with his work. He experienced embarrassment and viewed his performance as inadequate, even considering it a personal failure. This self-critique highlights the actor's own harsh standards and his relentless pursuit of perfection in his craft. Despite the critical acclaim and the admiration of audiences, Brando's own assessment of his role was far from favorable, reflecting a dissonance between his internal expectations and the external validation he received. Who was he? In the 1954 film On the Waterfront, directed by Aaliyah Kazan, there is a notable scene where Eva Marie Saint, portraying Eddie Doyle, accidentally drops her glove during a walk with Terry Malloy, played by Marlon Brando. Instead of halting the scene to correct the mistake, Kazan decided to continue filming, allowing Saint and Brando to improvise. This decision led to a genuine and touching interaction between the characters as Malloy picks up the glove and hands it back to Doyle. The scene stands out for its authenticity and has been praised for demonstrating how unplanned moments can enhance the narrative, adding a layer of realism to the film's portrayal of complex human emotions and relationships. This approach to filmmaking acknowledges the power of spontaneous, unscripted events in enriching a story, making the characters' interactions feel more alive and relatable to the audience. In the 1954 film On the Waterfront, the role of Eddie Doyle, played by Eva Marie Saint, was a pivotal element in the narrative's exploration of moral and ethical dilemmas on the gritty docks of New Jersey. The decision to list Saint as a supporting actress for the Academy Awards was a deliberate move by the studio. The strategic positioning was aimed at increasing her visibility and likelihood of winning the award. The calculated approach paid off when Saint won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress, highlighting the careful planning that goes into award season campaigns. Her performance, which was both subtle and powerful, contributed significantly to the film's critical success and remains a topic of discussion when examining the art of casting in cinema. I don't want you to think that I'm not grateful for everything you've done, for giving me the education and keeping me away from all of this. The 1954 film On the Waterfront drew its inspiration from a series of articles written by journalist Malcolm Johnson, which won the Pulitzer Prize. These articles shed light on the corrupt practices and organized crime prevalent in the New York waterfronts. The film's narrative is further enriched by incorporating the true event of a dock boss's murder, which underscores the significant role of journalism in bringing such stories to the forefront and shaping the narrative of cinema. This connection between real-life events and the silver screen not only provides authenticity to the storytelling, but also demonstrates the power of investigative journalism in influencing the arts and society at large. The film's ability to translate these sources into a compelling narrative showcases the profound effect that true events and dedicated journalism can have on cinematic expression. Killer. It's a In the 1954 film On the Waterfront, the role of Terry's friend, played by Thomas Hanley, was a pivotal element that brought a sense of reality to the narrative. Hanley's own life experiences, which were marked by struggles similar to those depicted in the film, such as union conflicts and personal tragedies, provided a layer of authenticity to his performance. His portrayal was not just acting. It was a reflection of his own encounters with the harsh realities of life, mirroring the film's exploration of moral dilemmas and the fight against corruption. 
This casting choice enriched the story, allowing the audience to connect with the characters on a deeper level, as they were not just fictional creations but representations of real life struggles. Now listen, you know who the pistols are. During the filming of On the Waterfront, the production team encountered significant challenges due to the local mafia's influence. The presence of organized crime figures was not just a narrative element within the film, but a tangible threat that loomed over the cast and crew. The Mafia's intimidation tactics and constant surveillance served as a stark reminder of the real-life risks involved in exposing the criminal underworld and its corrupt practices. This hostile environment created by the Mafia's interference mirrored the film's central theme of standing up against corruption, adding a layer of authenticity to the portrayal of the struggle against mob control on the docks. The filmmakers' determination to proceed despite these obstacles underscored their commitment to shedding light on the pervasive issue of organized crime, making the production of On the Waterfront a courageous act of artistic expression. Stay away from me. In the 1954 film On the Waterfront, there is a scene that includes the Andrea Doria, which, though not intended by the filmmakers, became a poignant moment of cinematic foresight. The inclusion of the Andrea Doria, a passenger ocean liner, in the backdrop of the film's narrative occurred before the vessel's infamous accident. Years after the movie's release, the Andrea Doria would be involved in a catastrophic collision at sea, leading to its sinking. This event mirrored the film's themes of struggle and tragedy, making the scene with the Andrea Doria a haunting echo of real-life events. The ship's presence in the film now stands as an accidental premonition of the disaster that would later befall it, adding a layer of historical significance to the movie's legacy. Me, I'm with me. It's Perry. Hey, got time, time for a cup of coffee. Uh, in the aftermath of the release of the 1954 film on the waterfront, a significant legal challenge arose. Anthony DaVincio, a man whose experiences bore a striking resemblance to those of the film's protagonist, filed a lawsuit against the filmmakers. He claimed that the movie invaded his privacy by closely mirroring his own life story without his consent. The case highlighted the delicate balance between creative expression and personal privacy rights within the realm of cinematic storytelling. It ultimately led to an out-of-court settlement, which served as a cautionary tale for filmmakers about the potential legal ramifications of drawing too closely from real-life events without proper authorization. This incident remains a notable example of the legal complexities associated with narrative inspiration and the protection of individual privacy in the arts.